Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to further acquaint my honorable colleagues with Bill C-46, Pipeline Safety Act. Bill C-46 represents another important step in realizing our government's commitment to assuring Canadians that this country's abundant natural resources are developed and transported in a safe and responsible manner. This commitment is the foundation of our plan for responsible resource development. No major project will proceed unless rigorous environmental and regulatory reviews have demonstrated that it is safe for Canadians and safe for our environment. This is essential if we are to continue to enjoy the benefits these industries have provided to generations of Canadians, and the benefits are many. Given Canada's wealth of natural resources, experience, and expertise of the industry in this country, we can be confident that the long-term prospects for natural resources development are there and will be benefit us all as Canadians. And it is this fact, Mr. Speaker, national resource development offers particular opportunity for Aboriginal people in Canada. Many of the existing or proposed energy and other natural resource and infrastructure projects are located near Aboriginal communities. We have a duty to consult these communities and we will work to ensure that they are fully engaged throughout the life cycle of resource development projects. It is a pillar of our plan for responsible resource development to pursue development in collaboration with Aboriginal people in a way that protects the local environment, in a way that respects Aboriginal and treaty rights, and in a way that enables Aboriginal people to participate in the economic opportunities that resource development can provide, opportunities that contribute to stronger, healthier, and more self-sufficient communities. We are taking concrete action to fulfill this commitment, to consult and engage Aboriginal communities in a truly meaningful way, including the safety of existing pipelines and the potential development of new pipeline infrastructure. The Pipeline Safety Act would provide for a series of new measures that would provide Canadians with the assurance of a truly world-class pipeline safety regime, strength strengthening incident prevention, preparedness and response, and liability and compensation. Prevention, of course, is the first priority, and the goal will always be zero accidents. Bill C-46 will give the National Energy Board the ability to guide pipeline builders and operators in the use of the best available technologies in federally regulated pipeline projects, from material and construction methods to emergent, emergency response techniques. To assure preparedness and effective response to incidents, pipeline companies would be required to show that they have ready access to a minimum amount of cash or cash equivalent so there, may, so there are no delays. In the event of a company is not able to mount an immediate effective response, Bill C-46 will provide the National Energy Board with the authority to, to step in and lead the response. Where liability is concerned, C-46 would impose absolute liability in the amount of $1 million on the pipeline company in other words, regardless of who or what caused an incident, the company would be liable for up to $1 billion in damages, period. Of course, there would be no limit on liability should the company be found at fault or proven that it had acted negligently and had caused the incident. The National Energy Board would have the authority to order the company to reimburse in full even above the $1 billion mark in absolute liability. Any and all cleanup costs incurred by federal, <coughs> provincial, municipal, or Aboriginal government body, or any person. And as with the Energy Safety and Security Act, which is currently in the Senate, the Pipeline Safety Act would include a firm statement of the principle of polluter pays. Taxpayers would not be held left held in the bag, companies would bear the full cost of cleanup and compensation. 
I want to emphasize, Mr. Speaker, that our government recognizes and is supporting the important role Aboriginal communities can play in assuring pipeline safety. And we continue to move forward with new initiatives to ensure Aboriginal communities are fully involved. There's another way the government is responding to the work of the Prime Minister's Special Representatives on West Coast Energy Infrastructure, Mr. Douglas Hayford. Based on Mr. Hayford's report, Forging Partnerships, Building Relationships, we are proposing the development of a strategy to bring Aboriginal communities, the Minister of Natural Resources, and project proponents together in establishing objectives and actions to enhance Aboriginal participation in pipeline safety. The goal is to integrate Aboriginal communities into the overall process of pipeline safety. The government will work with industry, provinces and territories, community colleges and Aboriginal communities themselves to develop and promote training of pipeline monitoring and emergency response. This collaborative approach will also focus on development, developing industry guidelines for the community involvement in the preparation of emergency response plans. Who should be engaged and how they should be engaged as well as the specific content of response plans. A further objective is identification of employment and business opportunities that Aboriginal engagement in pipeline safety may offer to all communities. In pipeline monitoring, for example, these are new initiatives built on earlier actions our government has taken to advance reconciliation through constructive engagement and collaboration. In May 2014, for example, our government announced a series of measures to strengthen the engagement with First Nations where resource development is concerned. These include establishing the major projects management office at West, a single window for the Government of Canada to coordinate activities on energy infrastructure development with British Columbia First Nations and industry in British Columbia and Alberta. In July 2014, a response to other key recommendations in the April report, we initiated action to promote reconciliation of advance of and outside the formal treaty process. These measures range from engaging on a new version of the guideline on consolation for federal officials to new guidance for industry, including an overall public statement to clarify roles and responsibilities. We have committed to enter into more consultation protocols with Aboriginal groups, which will support more efficient consultations in key priority areas, such as resource development. We are also acting to ensure Aboriginal communities have the resources they need to participate in consultations in a meaningful way in Economic Action Plan 2014. For example, we provided $13.6 million over two years for that very purpose. With the Pipeline Safety Act, our government is again providing commitment to respect and the interest of the Aboriginal people. I encourage all members of this House to support Bill C-46, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much.